Hey, ladies. Good morning. We're getting into the holidays. We're getting into that season of connection. And for some, it's stressful. It's busy. It's checklist and more and more. For others, it's, oh my gosh, my dysfunctional family. How can I handle this um, coming up? And for others, it's just super lonely, you know, with without family. So thinking maybe we could talk about how to prepare or do we prepare or, you know, how to help others, you know, just really have the right mental space to, to go into these next few months, which no matter what are stressful, chaotic, and, and always something that people almost like hold their breath, the holidays about what a shame. What so, a shame. I feel like there is this level of control that some people go into the holidays with. Um, and if I were to give kind of the, like, what are you going to let go of is let go of control hmm. this holiday season because it's an illusion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but just that idea of the perfect dinner, if you're traveling to someone else's you know house, what are they going to serve you? You know, the, the cranberry sauce out of the can. <laughs> Which um, I used to love. <laughs> so you figured we found out that no one's supposed to love that. Yeah. <laughs> now we've taken it away from you. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then my mother-in-law started making the real cranberry sauce. And I'm like, nobody likes that at all. <laughs> no? Mm -mm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, that, that idea of like, just let it go. Let, like be the only the anthropologic and anthropologists of your own life and just be super curious about what's going to unfold yeah mm, that's yeah. good I was going to ask you to give us um because it's inevitable right like even as you're describing it I know it's going to happen to me because I'm making the dinner and I don't usually so I'm going to be anxious and I'm going to go into hyper control mode so what do you advise us to say to ourselves if we can manage to notice <laughs> that that's what we're doing. Or if in my case, we get told gently by our spouse or our children that we're scary. <laughs> like what, what can we say to ourselves? And um, I'm going to just address you for the purposes of this podcast as Taylor Swift's sister, because you look like her. Right now. Okay. What should we say? What should we, how can we interrupt the pattern? I would say it's really great to have a um, a goal in mind. So for instance, it's not about whether or not you have the perfect turkey or whether everything goes on the table at the same time. Um, so if your point is connecting with your family, if your point is to laugh, because I know Gwen's totally about like it's laughter and it's fun and it's joy. So am I, am I experiencing joy right now? Um, like have that in mind. And for you, Liz, I would give you, what's the story that I'm going to tell? Because <laughs> you always have a story after something happens. Um, so like, it's all about fun life and living. Story. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Or at least fun for me to hear. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's not about, you know, it's about the connection. It's not about the food. It's not about the, the environment. It's not, you know, whether or not everyone's perfect. It's about... Um, even if like one of the kids is, is in a turd mood or whatever, or someone who's supposed to be there doesn't show up or someone who wasn't supposed to be there is going to show up. Like, it doesn't matter. Well, you know, let's pull up a chair. Let's, let's have it be the experience. Let's be curious. That's really helpful. And you actually just triggered me to think of two, two questions. One is what's the story I'm telling myself right now? that's causing me to need to control or causing me to freak out, right? Which is, um, in the case of me cooking, it's that my turkey is going to end up like the one in National Lampoon's vacation. And then the second question is, what's the funny story I'm going to tell myself about this later, right? Like, if the, you know what, 
really hits the fan for some reason, then it's how to, how am I going to turn this into a funny story? That's really helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Please tell me that you are not uh, frying a turkey. Okay, good. Also, I have a turkey doula. Uh, my brother-in-law, Matt, actually. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> he babysits me every step of the way. Okay. So the only concern I have at this moment is that he's at a softball tournament in California with his daughter. And I don't, I already forgot when he told me to take the turkey out of the freezer. So I'm going to have to interrupt him sometime this <laughs> next 24 hours and say, when did you tell me to take that thing out? I have confidence that um, it, as long as you're not frying the turkey, that it's going to be okay. So, so what's the concern about fried turkey? Normal cooks can have fried turkey blow up in them and it's it's like known to be injurious <laughs> like the hot oil bubbling over yeah so you're terrible. just concerned about liz <laughs> yeah yeah oh god okay yeah. gonna i'm gonna write a book called cooking with adhd <laughs> <laughs> you would never finish it and I, i'll you... have a ghost writer i'll have a ghost writer oh. just pictures <laughs> okay it's just a picture book Okay. Oh, okay. God. Okay. I, I, my, think, I think I would just add, if you yeah. are going to do anything different, it's really helpful to have a conversation with everybody involved ahead of time, just to let them know, I'm not going to worry about this. I'm not going to worry about this. I'm not going to be so formal. I'm not going to something because on the receiving end of this, when, when people do switch things up and these are traditions, um, sometimes it does create a big deal and you, you don't really want to show up that day and have it be a big deal. You just want to roll that out ahead of time, frame expectations, however you want to say it. Totally. Dude, yeah, amen. The, the disappointment that can come on like so unnecessarily. Yeah. So um, we are going to Hawaii for Thanksgiving, which normally um, it's just my husband and I, but two of the kids are joining us. And one of the kids months ago was like, hey, because he went he went to Thanksgiving last year, I think, if memory serves me correctly. Um, and we ate at a restaurant that didn't have any sort of traditional. So it was a nice dinner of fish and whatever, but it was not. Thanksgiving. So it didn't feel like Thanksgiving to him. And so he was like, I don't care. I'll cook it. He's 25. He's never cooked anything. <laughs> He's like, I'll, I'll do all the work, da, 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 but can we please have a more traditional Thanksgiving? And to have that conversation made me feel so good about like, okay, we don't want to cook and we don't want you to cook. So let me, let me go out of my way to find a place that is going to have traditional Thanksgiving. Um, so we, I think we found a really good alternative, but like to your point, Gwen, of just bringing it up and, and airing your, like this, this is what really matters to me for this day. Um, and, you know, I can bring it or, you know, whatever, but if you're not going to have the cornbread jalapeno stuffing, it's really important. That's what it means. Like, let's just have that conversation. Mm hmm because sometimes cooking or creating these experiences are expressions of love and some people receive them as that. And then when their thing doesn't show up, it just is a bigger set of drama than you'd ever imagine. Yeah. Can we talk for a minute about those of us who are going to be going through the holidays with um, some grief and loneliness? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Your first Thanksgiving without your mom. Yes. And um, I've been thinking about it in advance and, you know, how am I going to cope with that? And um, my mom really struggled through the holidays, especially Thanksgiving, because we lost my brother um, and his birthday was on Thanksgiving often. So, so is my first strategy is number one to 
I don't want to recreate, like, I don't want to have the same experience that my mom did where she was never able to participate. And then it affected everybody else. Um, but I also want to acknowledge that it's a big deal that she's gone. And so I think for myself, and I would offer this for other people who are missing somebody, um, whether it's the first time you're having a holiday without them or the 15th, um, that you create rituals to acknowledge them and remember them. And so I'm planning on having a candle for her and um, also for the other family members that were missing. And I'm going to have them right next to the table. Um, and, you know, when I'm talking about what I'm thankful for, I'm going to talk about her. And um, I think that's a better option than either just not participating, saying I can't do the holidays because I'm too sad, or just pretending that the person isn't gone and that we're not missing them um, because we don't want to make others uncomfortable or whatever it is. So, um, and then my other strategy, which is um, more for me, but I make my children participate and it's going to be even more meaningful this year is that we go to, um, we go to assisted living communities and memory care communities and we just spend time connecting with people who are lonely, you know, or who aren't um, getting to go be with their families. And that always makes me feel um, appreciative. And it kind of takes down the stakes, if you will, of that turkey being perfect and the teenagers being, um, you know, not teenagers. <laughs> yeah. I love right? that. <laughs> so those are my strategies and I'll let you know how it works because yeah, it's going to be fraught for sure. Yeah. Thinking about you, Liz, because you are so good at rituals. Um, I am not a ritual person, but my mother's birthday was on um, Thanksgiving. My mother and my grandmother's birthdays, they're like the 27th and 29th. So there was always, there was always like a, a cake um, in addition to like the pies and the, it's always like three pies and then the cake and so much. Um, and my first Thanksgiving without my mom um, was really interesting because Tom and I were on sabbatical. So we actually left and went to... Mm. I think the the day after Thanksgiving we went to New Zealand and Fiji and that's where we got married so that I love the idea of um you know including them in your thankfulness or in your gratitude around Thanksgiving um and I also would offer you um you know this Thanksgiving if you believe in this right she might be with your brother Mm. and therefore Thanksgiving is not as hard for her this year mm -hmm. and that's, mm -hmm. you know, that's a beautiful thing mm -hmm. that is a beautiful thing thank too. you for saying that yeah mm. I know of others who actually keep a seat open for those who have gone before us and so as they go around the table and offer their thanks when they get to that seat then everyone can just say a few words about what they think or love or are grateful about that person or that the group of people um if they want to you know no pressure and no fake but just you know acknowledging that there are people in your family that are very important and they still have a seat at the table I could see myself taking that way too far. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, a <laughs> that's a risk. A risk. The candle's perfect. Picturing and, and my mom's raincoat, her ashes. <laughs> Don't dress her up. Okay. No. Okay. No. 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 No, okay. but others do that. And so for if there are others listening, just, you know, all kinds of ways to do this. Yeah. It's about honoring. Mm -hmm. And connecting, yeah. you know, we started with connection. You know, I love the assisted living and the nursing homes and, and those that are lonely. Yeah. 
And volunteering on Thanksgiving is always, um, not always, it's something that I, I, <laughs> I was telling a client this morning <laughs> about my, um, my great aunt Lois who fed us Trader Joe's teriyaki chicken, um, and rice one year for Thanksgiving. Okay. And I was like, no, no, I'm not driving two and a half hours for teriyaki chicken anymore. So I started volunteering and sometimes my mom would come with me and sometimes, um, I would do it out in Tucson or, or Phoenix, depending on where we all were. Um, but the, you know, the, that, that aspect of volunteering and being in the mix on that day sometimes is helpful too, because then you're like, oh, like, it doesn't matter if my turkey is, is perfect because I have friends in a home and like context, just, you know, putting it all in context. I think another thing you just did, Kate, was say, no, boundaries are important. Mm -hmm. mm. Yep. Even just because we've done something forever or people expect us to continue to do something forever, or we've been invited to something should not be an obligation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you saying no doesn't mean that you don't love or care for the person. Right. It simply means that you're going to do something different. I choose it? not to do that because I choose to do this. I'm saying yes to myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes to some mm -hmm. others who might be very lonely. Yeah. Yes to something new. So Liz, what are you taking away today? Um, what's the story I'm telling myself? That works for so many things too. Um, if if you're in a in a conversation, you know, where somebody we get it's like our our we get so sensitive and our um our feelings can run really hot around the holidays, especially if there's drinking involved. So trying to get ourselves to pause and say, what's the story I'm telling myself? And then what's the story I'm going to tell later, right? Like, what's the funny story? What's what's the um, absurdity about whatever's going wrong? And then, and then just making sure to bring in the ritual. Yeah. A little ritual, a lot of fun. What people remember are the funny crazy things yeah. Mike Mike's uh grandma one year got so mad at grandpa she started throwing rolls across the table and we're all rolling on the floor dying laughing and you know our kids were teeny weeny and they still talk about that that's hilarious and then they make fun of the cranberry salad you know all's good yeah <laughs> I'm definitely not making sweet potatoes this year because nobody likes them. And I always light the marshmallows on fire on accident. So <laughs> that's why we stay away from the fryer, the, the turkey fryer. So no flames, no flames. Well, except for the ones, you know, not broiling. I won't be broiling anything. Okay. okay. Away from the broiler. Okay. Good. What else is Liz? not allowed to do Kate no frying a turkey obviously but that's not what you, you never have to worry about that the yeah. main concern was that she would have I'm, I feel like I'm actually pl implanting it in her head like next year she's gonna try to fry a turkey <laughs> um but yeah that was my main concern was just making sure she didn't fry a turkey yeah no hope no home on fire no keep the no. candle wicks trimmed yeah yeah <laughs> Don't try to put out the fire with your wine. Right. Not near curtains or shears or blankets. Just, you know, nice so open space. Don't travel with it. Yes. Okay. Fair. That's fair. <laughs> I did get a um, new apron for myself this year. It says, let's get basted. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, we want to see pictures of All you right. in the apron. With your turkey. With your turkey. We will post those whenever they're revealed. 
Got it. Thanks, Have guys. a good one, ladies. Bye.